Asadids. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be getting back on the tube chassis OBS. We're going to be building a front bumper for it as well as getting this radiator that we got in the last video and the header panel uh, tied into the front bumper once it's built. So as you can see I have already gotten started on this. Got the main bumper tube already cut to length. I'm um, just sitting up there on a couple couple chairs but I also came in here off camera Got some tabs tacked to the header panel mount that I made. Um, the reason for these is this uh, valence was actually sagging quite a bit right here to the headlight. So there was a hole right here. So I just made a tab real quick and then pushed this up to the headlight and then tacked the tab to the tube. So that'll keep that in place. Now for the valence here, there's four bolts holding it in. There's one here, one right there, and then obviously two more on the other side replicating this side. but. That should hold this balance in place nice and tight. I don't want anything on this header panel moving when it's all said and done, because I have seen a couple trucks um, running header panels, not necessarily this specific style truck, but just pre-runner styled trucks, and the header panels move quite a bit um, when they're remounted and they're not mounted correctly. So I don't want that. I want all this stuff to be nice and snug um, and never moving when the truck's going through the dirt or whatever it's doing. But like I said before, I have already gotten started on this a little bit. I got this tube cut to length, marked center line, and then I also put a 10 degree bend right here in the center just to get it to match to the valance a little bit. Now the next step is gonna be coming in here and right here where it actually comes away from the valance, I need to put a bend in right here and a bend in right here. And then once it's tucked to the degree that I want here, It'll come around and then I'll put, end up putting another bend in it here to match to the valance and then it'll end up stopping at the same point as this valance right here, it'll end. Right now this tube is sitting just in front of the valance piece just so I can figure out all the angles it needs but all said and done this tube's gonna end up being tucked right up underneath this just how I did on the Ranger. The only similar things between the Ranger and this is literally gonna be this tube and that's basically it. Everything else up underneath here is gonna be completely different to be able to clear the radiator, all the front bulkhead for the center mounted arms, everything like that. So doing this stuff by myself definitely is a little interesting though. I've got to shim up this chair to get everything to sit somewhat level on the truck because the truck isn't sitting level in the garage, but not a big deal. We got it figured out. Now just need to get those two bends put in first thing and then I'll get back with you guys. got a couple more bends put in this tube as you can tell it's tucked into this header panel way better now probably gonna come in and add a little bit more bend to this last bend on each side just because it's not matching to the valance exactly how I like it but you can tell just a little bit more bend here get this to line up a little bit better probably gonna end up cutting it somewhere around here in this area I'm not gonna actually wrap it around the edges just because I do that on every other one of the bumpers that I've done, but I want to do something a little bit different on this truck. So we're going to cut it a little bit shorter than normal and see how that looks. I think it'll look real good. And then the skid plate will be running two tubes off of the bottom of the bulkhead here. Then they'll come up to the top of the bulkhead right underneath. And then our skid plate will be inside of here. And then we'll add some tubes that go from here out to the main tube. So I got a couple more degrees in the outside bends and I also cut the end of the bumper down and capped them off. So now I can go ahead and get the tube that's gonna go from the top of the bulkhead up here, basically right next to the upper arm. It's gonna go from here just to the outside of this um, stand. And then what I did is you can see I notched out a little bit of that balance to be able to have the tube run and be tucked as tight as possible up in here. So it should land on the tube right there where I notched out on both sides. That's what I'm gonna be working on right now, getting those in so this tube can actually be sitting up here on its own without the stands and a clamp holding it on. So I wanted to show you guys something real quick. I'm getting these support tubes made for the main tube on the bumper. As you can see, I got this side in and tacked in place. What I'm doing is I'm actually using this Pipe Master 
and what this is is basically just it tells you exactly what your notch needs to be so you can either slide it over a piece of tubing and go up against whatever you're trying to do and just slide it on and it'll give you the perfect um, notch or what I'm doing because this notch is pretty difficult is I just took this and kind of just figured it out I'm going on the corner of this bulkhead right here so I just kind of messed with it got it to fit exactly how I wanted and then as you can see transferred it over to my tube I already have this side notched got that done in the notcher but something like this where it's a nice sharp angle to get on a corner like that I can't do in a notcher so I'm cutting these out by hand but this thing is literally a lifesaver the front of the structure is really starting to look like something now with the main bumper tube in we did get both these support tubes in now I got that side in and tacked up as you can tell though this notch right here is what we did with the pipe master and there's no way you'd be able to do that with just a normal notcher because of the notch is so tight so super pumped on the way those came out there's no way I mean there is a way I could have gotten that without the pipe master but it would have taken way way longer these tubes took me each one probably took me 10 to 15 minutes to get in place so not too bad it would have been a lot longer if I didn't have the pipe master to get that in so the next tubes we're going to be adding to this is going to be from the top of the bulkhead down to the bottom down here um, those are going to be the skid plate tubes there's going to be two tubes that run up at kind of diagonals um, just to get the top of the skid plate to be a little bit wider than the bottom I do need to be careful when I'm doing this because the swinger right here off the rack it does swing back and forth when you turn the tires and the bottom part where the bolts actually mount could come in contact with the tube that I run off of here so I need to be careful of that I can't actually cycle this rack because it it's meant to be under pressure um, when the motors running it runs off of a power steering pump obviously so I need to just make sure I leave enough room in there uh, to be able to clear all that stuff the reason we're adding those tubes and the skid plate in here is to protect the rack and the swing set steering this truck at full bump is basically six inches off the ground from this lowest point so you'd imagine if this truck comes off a jump and lands at full bump and you're in a whoop section or what have you the bottom of this is going to get hit so you want to protect all the important stuff up here so the skid plate will be the first thing that contacts anything and if you've noticed a skid plate on most trucks is for there is a purpose behind it it's not just for looks on the Ranger and on the 92 F1 build the bumper that I've built on these actually protects the swinger and the pitman arm so you can see the bumper right here actually sits lower the lowest point of the bumper actually sits lower than anything on the steering so that's to protect anything at full bump when you hit anything it's going to hit the skid plate and not any important stuff on the front of the truck so with that in mind i do want to protect the rack and the swing set both these things are not cheap so you definitely want to protect the goods <laughs> another thing i noticed is these lower arm mounts are pretty spread apart compared to most center mounted trucks i've seen some where they're extremely close together some where they're spread out like this the reason this one is spread out is because when they designed this in cad they wanted to make sure that the motor fit inside of here and there's enough header clearance and all that stuff so the wider these were spread apart the easier it was to get a motor in here be able to get to the trans and all that stuff at least that's what i've been told i don't know if that's 100 percent true or not but it does make sense to me so what i'm probably going to do off of here is not keep them too narrow i'll probably spread the tubes out a little bit and then have them run up to the edges up here to match up with the bumper looks like this will just be like pretty much a 45 off of here or pretty close to it and then probably the same deal up here there's not even going to be any notching it's just going to be flat surfaces so pretty simple stuff
getting back in the swing of things. It's probably been four or five days since the last time I picked up the camera. Between the last time I did pick up the camera and right now, I have just been working on getting the front of the truck all wrapped up. It has been quite the learning curve. I've never worked on a tube chassis truck before, let alone mounting a whole front clip like this ever in my life. So I'm learning as I go and trying to film that and explain exactly what I'm doing along the way is definitely a task. So this is all together now. Um, I have came in here and welded everything up and it's all good to go. Came in here, added this little dimple die plate um, for the radiator mount. And then we also came in and added another tube here on each side, as well as this tube that runs up and across the top of the truck. Um, and it also has a tab to mount the core support off of, just to add a little bit of strength so this thing's not bouncing around or nothing crazy like that. Everything's in here nice and solid. Looks super good. I'm really happy with the way all this stuff came out, especially for it being the first time that I've ever done this. Everything's nice and straight. Bumpers in here, tucked up nice and tight like you saw. And then all this stuff. I don't have the skid plate on yet. I'm still waiting for, I need to get the three bolts to mount it, the correct hardware, the final hardware for it. But all this stuff is in here, welded up and ready to go. Right there you can see the clip that holds the grill into the header panel. There is, when I move it, you can see right there, there is quite a bit of play um, in that little area right there. So what I'm probably gonna do is, there is a bolt hole right here in the center of the grill and there is a tube right below here. So what I'll probably do is just add a tab coming off of this tube up to this uh, bolt hole on the grill, throw a bolt through it and that should hold it nice and tight. Shouldn't wanna go anywhere after that. The front of this truck is basically uh, finished now. Everything's on here. One other thing I wanna add real quick because some people might be curious. The radiator that we're running in this truck is a CBR radiator. It's 32 inches wide by 19 inches tall. And it's also running two 16 inch fans on the back side of it, which are pretty much the biggest fans I think you can put on a radiator like this. Um, should be plenty of cooling for the motor that's going in this truck. The reason we did mount this the radiator in the front of the truck instead of in the rear is because on most race trucks they don't run a windshield or a back window so all the air can flow straight through the truck um, and straight to the radiator without any issues on this when you have a windshield and a back window all the air has to go up and either over the top of the cab or from the side and then have some scoops going in so i did i didn't want to deal with any of that having to make scoops for the radiator nothing like that because back here right behind the cab. Ooh, what is that? A little sneak peek. Sneak peek of the fuel cell. That's gonna be in an upcoming video, but having a radiator there, it's the fans aren't really pulling any air. It's just kind of a dead space. So um, definitely not mo the most ideal spot to put a radiator here, especially if you're running glass in the cab. So that is why we mounted it in the front. Typically, at least what I've seen on most center mounted trucks like this, they do run a smaller radiator in the front. It's usually, it's made by CBR, but it's typically a little bit smaller in height and then wider. And it runs three smaller fans on the back side of it. And the reason for that is because, at least from what I, I think and what I've experienced with this, is because it tucks into the header panel a little bit better. It doesn't stick up over the top of it as much as this does. So that's probably gonna be it for this video. We did get basically the entire front end of the truck all together definitely looking like something now she's got a little face to her um, the next video is gonna be on the sway bar setup I did go today and pick up everything I need for that so that is going to be the next video that you see on this truck um, after that you did get a little sneak peek of the fuel cell so that's gonna be a video coming up as well if you guys like what you saw make sure you like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one peace